Hello there. If you've been looking for some easy DIY mods for your Steam Deck to make it cooler, faster, and stronger, uh, maybe not in that order, I've got you covered. I will say that your mileage may vary, so don't go ahead and write me an angry comment saying how it didn't work for you. Actually, you know what? Go ahead and do that. I need the engagement. Okay, and a disclosure, these were gifted to me so that I could make content, but as always, all opinions are my own. And there's no particular order to these, so feel free to check the timestamps and jump around. But make sure to check the end of the video where you see the final form of the Steam Deck OLED. The first one I'm showing up here is brand new, hot off the presses, but not hot enough to make your Steam Deck boil. That's because it's gonna cool your Steam Deck off with this nice heatsink that's on the back of this mod case. Now, as long as you're not fumbling around with it like I am, you'll be able to see its nice translucent back as well. Did I also mention that if you buy a backplate from Handheld DIY, you'll also get the tools included typically? In this case, you get the Torx screwdriver for the Steam Deck OLED, and then you also get the Phillips screwdriver for the Steam Deck LCD. Now, I previously installed the Hall Effect sticks also from Handheld DIY on the Steam Deck, and they're a little bit tighter is what I'll say, but I'm happy to know that there's no drift in the future with them. So that's just a quick aside as to something that you can mod your Steam Deck with as well, and you could do it at the same time that you're modding this Steam Deck backplate. Now, while this is not a review of this backplate, I will say that the overall build quality I liked. I feel that it is printed on some kind of material that doesn't feel like just some cheap 3D print. Additionally, if you don't like that kickstand for whatever reason, you can unscrew it as well as that nameplate, which can be customized on their website or also removed if I'm not mistaken. Now, as my friend CPPC Tech would say, there's also a party trick that this thing has, and that's this strap that you can attach to the back. Now, as long as you're not an idiot like me and you attach it in some kind of strange way and you just put it on the way it was meant to, you can also attach a big boy battery to the back. This here is another mod, I'm gonna call it. This Steam Deck mod will add 144 watt hours to this thing, meaning that you'll have nearly 200 watt hours or uh, maybe an all day long Steam Deck. Now, it doesn't look in any way practical, then that's because it probably isn't. But I suppose if you were going for a long road trip, this would do it. Make sure not to take this thing on a plane though, because it will get confiscated. Now, if you're watching this for a practical solution, you can see yourself out now. Uh, just kidding. There is this INU P63 battery, which has 80 watt hours, and that's almost double the Steam Deck OLED's battery, and it's about double the Steam Deck LCD's battery. So that means you might stretch your Cyberpunk play from about an hour and a half to, you know, let's say four and a half hours or even five or six hours. And what I'm gonna show you on the screen here is about the approximate weight you'll have for these different setups. If you choose to add this battery bank, like the INU one, you're gonna be just over two pounds or so, and then over three pounds for that AO High Starship. Yeah, I do like that power bank, but it's not really practical to carry around. Again, unless it's on a long road trip. The point I'm trying to make here though, is that you could strap this thing to multiple battery banks, just like all the battery banks that I've featured on this guide in the channel before. Uh, or you could of course strap it to your hand and uh, give yourself this gigantic Pip-Boy thing for whatever reason. And if you're wondering if the cooling backplate actually works, I'll have that at the end of the video. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about potentially the easiest possible mod you could add or add on to the Steam Deck, and that's these tiny little joystick raised caps. These things literally just click on to the top of your Steam Deck. And if you happen to be an ROG Ally owner, I believe these will clip on as well too. Uh, I just don't have my Ally anymore, so I can't test it to tell you. Now, one thing to note about these stick caps is it does feel like it's a pretty snug fit, so I wouldn't suggest taking them off and putting them on multiple times, um, you know, cause it might damage it. That said, it does give some nice added control from the additional height. And it comes with two different heights and I'm gonna ask them if we can have a pair of matching heights or you know, even different colors because that would be a nice little addition. As well as a nice way to, of course, customize your Steam Deck. So at this point, you might've noticed that I didn't include anything like a case. And that's because a case is kind of like an accessory. I know I'm using that term with mod kind of interchangeably, but you could use something like this JSOX case that will probably fit the iNU power bank as well. For me, in my case, I find that putting the iNU back battery bank in my pocket as well as putting the Steam Deck in its original case works just as well. Okay, well, modding the Steam Deck physically and then adding a power bank or some accessories is all nice, but what about software changes that cost you nothing? Well, I'm glad you asked. The first one I'll mention here is overclocking and undervolting your Steam Deck. Don't worry, it's perfectly safe, although it very much is a your mileage may vary situation. And basically that means it depends on what's called silicon lottery. If you're not familiar with that term, basically it means that you might get a good one or you might get a dud. In my case, I think it's just kind of average. And what that means is it's not a life-changing experience, so you can do it or you can choose not to do it. 
So let me tell you how you would do this and then quickly tell you what the safe practices would be. First, let's go over the undervolt. This means how much your Steam Deck will consume in terms of power. From my rough estimate, it will save about a watt or so. How much does that really affect real world performance? Well, when we're talking about eking out all the performance you can get, probably a decent amount over time, but I'll say that I didn't do long-term testing. First, you should power down your Steam Deck and not be stupid like me and try to install that mod case first. Once your Steam Deck is powered down, turn it back on while holding the volume up button. Then once the four options are there, choose setup utility and then go to advanced. In this screen, you'll want to modify the voltage offset. The safe thing to do here would be to go minus 10 millivolts and then run some games after rebooting the deck and then go minus 20 millivolts and then run some games and so on. Uh, I was just lazy so I just went with minus 30. If there's any kind of instability like the deck is crashing, you'll know that you went too far. And if you've gone too far, you know you need to pull it back a little bit and go back to minus 20 or minus 10. That's the part where your mileage may vary. And now for the overclock part. That's where it says CLK override. That's the clock override. You'll see the top one says for the CPU and the bottom one says for the GPU. It also tells you what the safe parameters are for each section. Like the safe parameters for the GPU being 2000 and the safe parameters for the CPU being 4200 megahertz. In my case, my deck couldn't reach those numbers anyway beforehand and it couldn't do it after overclocking. So once again, that's why I said mine was just kind of mediocre. Ultimately, I do think that if you are able to get a stable overclock, it's probably gonna affect the 1% lows or a little bit of the stuttering at least overall. And similarly to the undervolting, if you have stability issues with your game, like the game is crashing often, you know you went too far. Uh, in this case for the overclock though, most likely it just won't reach those numbers rather than just crashing outright. Okay, what about the other software takes? This is the one that everyone is talking about these days, it's frame generation on the Steam Deck. For games that are not natively supporting frame generation, like that of Cyberpunk 2077 or Spider-Man. So to get this Decky Frame Gen plugin, I'm gonna assume that you already have Decky Loader. There's an old guide on the channel, which still kind of works, and there's plenty of other guides out there, but leave me a comment if you'd want a dedicated video on this. Here's how you get Decky Frame Gen working though. First, once you're in your Steam Deck that's powered on, just go to desktop mode. And once you're in desktop mode, just search for Decky Frame Gen. Once you've opened up that GitHub page, just download that package, which is a zip file. Then, assuming that you have Decky Loader properly installed, you'll just go to a folder called Homebrew, and then you'll extract that zip file's contents, which says Decky Frame Gen, into it. Then you just reboot your Steam Deck, and then open up the Decky Loader plugin page, and then install Decky Loader Frame Gen from that side. This is basically it. All you have to do after that is map per game on your Steam Deck, and you would do that by checking the Steam Deck controller mapping settings to the insert button, which will allow you to pull up this OptiScaler menu. In my case, I mapped L4, which is one of the back buttons, to the insert key on the keyboard. Now that I'm in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I can just pull up the menu and then set the different FSR versions like FSR2, FSR3, or even XESS. Make sure you don't ignore the on-screen prompt though, and you select DLSS as an upscaling mode inside the game itself. Also, if you get ghosting issues with the on-screen display or the HUD, make sure to check that HUD fix box. You can also play around with checking the box that says extended fix. And now the moment you're waiting for. Here I'm showing an on-screen difference between the stock Steam Deck that I had before and the Steam Deck with all of these modifications. Here first I'm gonna show you on screen here the difference between the stock backplate and the cooling mod case backplate from Handheld DIY. From here you'll be able to see there's a consistent difference of maybe three to four degrees on both the CPU and and the GPU individually, and that's not nothing. So I guess I'll say it does work, and I've tested this multiple times over the past couple of days. Apologies here for the wonky looking colors and darkness, I forgot that I had HDR enabled on my capture card. You'll notice here also that there's a difference in the clock speeds on the GPU, and that's because there's the pre-overclock and the post-overclock. The wattage difference, you'll see it bounces around, and that's again where your mileage may vary from the undervolt. And finally, here's everything put together with the frame gen mod included. If you're disappointed that the frame gen is not giving you two times the generation, that's because the city in here for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is pretty demanding. And don't forget that frame generation is a CPU demanding task. So there it is. Thanks for clicking on the video and don't forget. You are a beautiful person, so don't let anything hold you back.